afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's time to talk about what's happening in the tropics. And we have quite a few areas that we're monitoring. None of them look too impressive at this point, but I just want to pinpoint what we have going on so that you will be aware of what to expect, especially as we are getting close to the weekend and you may have a lot of outdoor plans across Houston and other parts of Southeast Texas. All right, so the first area that we're monitoring is basically right at our doorstep. This is just to the south of Houston and Galveston. It's a broad area of low pressure, fairly disorganized. We've got showers, heavy downpours, storms in this region, and we also have this basically developing along a weak frontal boundary. So the National Hurricane Center has given this a 10% very low shot that it could briefly turn into a tropical depression or tropical storm. However, that chance is very low. That means there's a 90% shot, it won't happen. But regardless of whether it happens or not, we do have the potential for more of those heavy downpours developing right around the coast and then sliding inland, especially for the rest of today through early Friday. In fact, we still have a flood watch for parts of the area, including a few of our counties down around Brazoria County. This includes Galveston County, and this also includes Chambers County. This is going to be all the way through 7 a.m. Friday. So some of these areas have already picked up five, six, seven, eight inches of rain earlier in the week and with an additional one to three inches of rain potentially between now and tomorrow morning you know what could happen that could lead to some flooded streets so certainly watch out for that there but notice we are getting some downpours to the north of the flood watch area due to this broad circulation or area of low pressure just off of the southeast texas gulf coast Notice the heavy downpours building into parts of Harris County. Let's start off in downtown Houston, looking pretty good here. But as you jump up towards Spring, Aldine, Jersey Village, Cypress, back towards Brookshire and into parts of Katy and Tomball, yes, there's some rain and some of it is pretty heavy, especially near Cypress and south of Jersey Village. So keep in mind if you are going to run some errands, if you're going to be out and about, maybe picking the kiddos up from school this afternoon, watch out for some wet roads and heavy downpours in those areas. This broad area of circulation or disturbance continues to spread rain even farther north of the Houston area up into Montgomery County. We've got some showers near Conroe and Willis and also over towards Cold Spring, Shepherd, Livingston, getting some heavy rain here farther south around the coast. We have had some bursts of heavier rain throughout the day, but things are kind of calming down at least temporarily. But you can see some of those heavier downpours back up around Katy and a few showers near Wharton and El Campo. So this is going to be the trend for the rest of today and tonight. I don't really think there's a decent shot that we're going to get a tropical system from this, but you can see this front, this weak front, just kind of camping out, kind of hanging out across the area. Just offshore, there is that area of circulation that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring, but it really doesn't have much of a chance of survival. It's already very close to making landfall. And we've got another cold front that will dip in from the north for Friday evening and Friday night, and that should be the end of it after that. That should kind of push it on out of here, and that will push a lot of this rain out of here as well. But with this disturbance just offshore, that means the threat for more heavy rain, not just for parts of the Texas Gulf Coast, but over towards the Louisiana Gulf Coast as well, and even to the east of there, parts of southern Mississippi and southern Alabama. Highest flood risk through to tonight will be the area in red. That's the biggest area of concern. So that ranges from a Baton Rouge over to New Orleans, but even in Houston and Galveston, we remain in that two out of four elevated slight risk for that street flooding due to the fact that we've got that disturbance and that front kind of lingering meandering in the area. So that means the risk for street flooding it's still with us, so make sure, especially as we get close to the rush hour and even into the evening hours, that you are very careful out there and watch out for any flooded roads. We are almost out of this super soggy pattern for Southeast Texas, but we got a little bit more to go. So between today and Friday, 
Models not really showing too much in the way of additional rain for Houston, likely less than an inch, but between League City down towards Galveston, maybe parts of Santa Fe, Angleton, Lake Jackson, Freeport. These are the spots that could pick up an additional one to three inches of rain between today and Friday. So basically over the next 24 hours. So here's the disturbance hanging out just south of Houston. Let's see what our future cast shows as far as this rain. Notice the majority of the rain staying close to the coast and off to our east a lot of that really heavy rain impacting parts of the Louisiana Gulf Coast that's where the highest flood risk will be we will have some showers pushing in for Friday morning but by Friday evening I think the majority of that rain kind of starts to roll out and you know what that is right on time because that's what many of you will likely try to get your weekend started so this is great timing for a change. Here is the cold front that will bring sensational weather for the weekend. It is going to be pushing right over San Antonio tomorrow evening, then down into Houston tomorrow night. Behind that front, much drier air. Notice all of that green and all of those thick clouds. The rain, the clouds finally start to scatter out and go away, and that means also drier air, lower humidity levels, plenty of sunshine, beautiful weekend weather. It's going to be great pool weather, great beach weather. Maybe you're going to be enjoying a watch party, watching the Texans in action, regular season action for the first time this season coming up on Sunday. So overall weather conditions will be quiet and it appears that that system will not turn into a tropical depression or tropical storm, but of course we'll continue to watch it. It's not just that one that we're watching. We've got four other systems or disturbances that we are monitoring for tropical development in the Atlantic Basin. So we've got the broad area of low pressure situated near that front in the northern Gulf of Mexico, just south of Houston. That's number one. We've got number two out in the western portions of the Caribbean. That one's set to push into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico this weekend into early next week. But it now only has a low 20% chance for development, so it likely would remain fairly weak if it even becomes a tropical depression and it should stay south of Houston. All right, our third disturbance that we're monitoring now getting closer to the Lesser Antilles. This is going to be just to the east of the Lesser Antilles. It is projected to push into parts of the southwestern Atlantic as we go into the next several days, and it only has a low chance for development, about a 10% chance. Next disturbance is a little bit farther out into the Atlantic, so we've got several days to watch that one, but that one's still fairly disorganized and upper level winds likely are not going to be favorable for development, so we don't have to worry too much about that one. And then finally, we've still got this area of low pressure a couple hundred miles east of the Carolinas. Now that one has increased to a 30% shot for development over the next two to seven days but it likely would be subtropical, maybe briefly tropical, but by Saturday, it's going to be moving into cooler waters as it pushes to the north and northeast, and that means it likely would weaken and would no longer have a chance to turn into a tropical storm. Regardless, it's moving away from the U.S., so I don't think that one is going to impact land. So we've got a lot of systems we're watching. None of them look that impressive, and none of them look to have any major impacts, at least over the next few days. But so far, it has been a busy season with some major impacts from some of these systems that have developed. Of course, we've had the three hurricanes, Barrel, which at one point was a Category 5, Debbie, which was a Category 1, and Ernesto, which blew up to a Category 2, and Alberto and Chris, tropical storms. So we're still waiting to see if we get the next few systems that will be named Francine and Gordon. We've kind of had a lull in the action, really, for the last three and a half weeks. We had Ernesto to form on August 12th, dissipated on August 20th, and now we're into September and we haven't had any named storms across the Atlantic Basin since then. Not that that's a bad thing. It's nice to get a break, but just keep in mind this hurricane season could ramp up once again fairly quickly, so don't let your guard down. For the rest of September, these are the areas that we're monitoring for that potential additional development. Western Atlantic has the highest shot to see some named storms that could become hurricanes. Then the Central Atlantic, the second highest chance for that tropical activity. And of course, we always are monitoring the Gulf of Mexico, still an above average chance that we could get one of these little disturbances, similar to what we have now. Broad area of low pressure kind of forming right along a cold front, and that could cause 
some tropical cyclone formation. Here is some good news though. Colorado State University forecasters, of course, at the beginning of the season calling for a super busy, super active hurricane season. But between September 4th and September 16th, they're thinking that there's a 60% shot of below normal tropical activity, 30% chance for near normal activity and a 10% chance for above normal activity. So I think things will likely get active, but it's likely going to be closer to the end of September into early October. So we can keep pushing it back. I hope we push it all the way back to the end of hurricane season and we don't have anything else. But of course, we will continue to monitor it because things could still ramp up out there. The Saharan dust started to kind of clear some over the last week or two, but we do see some thicker dust gearing up to head off of the western coast of Africa. So that could kind of hinder some of these systems from getting too strong. But if a tropical system is able to develop and survive, we've still got plenty of warm water in the Gulf, the Caribbean, and much of the Atlantic. So that is why we still have to watch things very closely. All right, we are into September now. We are about five days away from the peak of hurricane season, which is right around September 10th. So that's why I'm saying things may not be super active out there, but don't let your guard down because this is typically the busiest, craziest, most active portion of hurricane season and things could quickly develop and you want to be prepared to make sure that you go over your hurricane plan, make sure you have an evacuation plan if that needs to happen, and make sure you have all of the emergency gear that you would need if you are going to stay put, just in case we do have another tropical storm or hurricane heading our way. Well, the good news is that the system close to Houston right now only has a low 10% chance for development. That likely not happening with that cold front pushing in tomorrow. So thank goodness we don't have to worry too much about that. But certainly keep in mind that the hurricane season could be very busy over the next month. So make sure that you stay prepared, stay aware, and stay safe.